Hello, I'm Steve Stepp. I'm president of National Audio Company. It's a family-owned business. Uh, we're the largest manufacturer of audio cassettes in the world. We've been in business since 1969 and uh, began as a broadcast uh, supply business selling reel-to-reel -reel tape to radio stations and later broadcast cartridges to radio stations. When the audio cassette first came out, a salesman for Ampex Corporation came by and uh, he showed me that audio cassette and he said, look at this, it's the, uh, it's the product of the future. And I did look at it and I said, looks like maybe you could use it to make a, a little uh, voice for a little doll. I can't use, see any other purpose for that. So that shows you my, my advanced uh, forward thinking. But uh, that has turned out to be our main product. And uh, now we make audio cassettes and sell them all over the world to uh, customers who want both blanks and pre-duplicated product. It's a topic that seems to be a fascination with people why audio cassettes are making the recovery that they have been. It's very similar to the story of vinyl. And in fact, they're tracking right along with each other. There is a certain amount of nostalgia to people my age because I was raised with audio cassettes. But that's not the demographic driving the revival of the audio cassette. It's the under 35 age group. That's the audience you want because if you sell them your product and they like it, they're gonna be using it the rest of their lives. The 35 and under age group is driving the return to audio cassettes because number one, it's something tangible, something physical. You can hold it in your hand, put it on your shelf. You can read the J card or the cover art as you listen to the music. It's collectible, it's tradable with other people who collect and trade them. And this is the best part. This is an age group raised on MP3s and earbuds. Compressed music with whole frequencies missing. Tiny little speakers that were never intended to be very good. Suddenly they started listening to LPs on old phonographs over good speakers. They started listening to professionally produced tapes on good tape decks over good speakers. And they realized, wow, that's what music's supposed to sound like. Your ears are analog. The world around you is analog. It's not digital. It's a natural sound. And so that's what's driving it. Not the old guys like me driving up and down Route 66 in my 1965 convertible or something, which I don't have, but it's the young people who have rediscovered what real music sounds like, and that is what's driving the, re the revival of the cassette and of vinyl. I tell people a lot of our success here is due to stubbornness and stupidity. We were too stubborn to quit and too stupid to know the business was over with. Uh, the fact of the matter is that even when CDs took over the cassette business, or the music business, uh, they never did take over the spoken word. There was a great market for blank cassettes for people who recorded their own media and were doing spoken word and for publications. We are taking a 30,000 foot space on the second floor of this building and we are putting together the first cassette tape coating and slitting line in this country in the last 40 years. Uh, it's, it's quite an adventure. At the conclusion of this process, we will be able to make our own cassette tape. It will be studio master quality tape, not music duplicator tape, not voice grade tape, studio master tape. It's the reason we're still here. It doesn't make sense, it's against conventional wisdom, but the reason we're still here is because we stayed with what we did well and we tried to improve upon it and we gambled that this product was not dead, it would make a return. If you're gonna look for a niche market, if you're gonna look for something you do best that you can survive doing from now on and that you can modify to suit what the customer wants to buy, then I think you can't be very conservative. That's, you have to take some gambles and some risk there. We hope we're taking the right risk. We're taking a big one right now with the tape line, uh, but I can tell you this, we have customers already lined up worldwide to buy that tape. We wouldn't be investing the money in this line if we didn't think that the market was there in the future.